All right, guys, you know, uh, hi again. So what I want to do now, right, I want to, uh, so last time, or like last video, which didn't happen too long ago, right, we looked at the regression coefficients, right, and we said that we have a uh, y, which is going to be presented as beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus yada 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 beta n x n plus epsilon, right? And we said that in this case, okay, we know that our betas are actually x transpose x inverse times x transpose y. Right. That's what we had, okay? So now, okay, what we want to do, we want to ask ourselves, okay, what is the distribution of beta. Okay. Now, what does it mean, right? I mean, the issue here is that I did not dwell too much on the assumptions underlying, right, this, all this regression business. But you can always think about the fact, okay, that what you want to, what you want to have, right, is that your y1s to yn's and your x11 one, one to x1n, right? Uh, to xn1 and then x12, uh, xn2, right? These observations, first of all, are independent of each other, right? So if you look on y1, y2, y3, yn, they're all independent of each other. And the, the same for the x's. Now, what we are assuming, right? We're making a very big simplifying assumptions. We are, we're taking all the randomness for, from x. So we're basically saying that we want to calculate our distribution of beta conditional on x, which means now, right, that x is fixed, right? So it means, so it's all conditional on x. And we're relying on, but so where, where is the randomness coming from? The randomness coming from y, okay? The randomness coming from y, okay, but so in this in this presentation, the randomness will come only from the residue, from the epsilon, right? So you're assuming that all the guys, right, that x's are constant, okay, and it's a huge simplifying assumption, okay, because if x is different, right, if x is also random, then the expressions are becoming more complicated. There are expressions for that. Right? But they're becoming much more complicated. Maybe we can, you know, maybe I'll cover this in a later video. But now we're doing a simplifying assumption that all the randomness is coming from epsilon. Okay? So then it means that, you know, these betas, right, are going to depend basically on the randomness of epsilon. Because you can think about it in this way. Okay, you know x. You're sampling y once again, right? This is just one observation. You know that y are, you know that you know that y are normally distributed. So you're going to sample another y. You're going to get some other series. You're going to run the betas. You can have slightly different coefficients, right? So every time you sample a new se set of observations for y, you run these regressions, you can get a different coefficients, right? But because you know x's, it will all come from this epsilon, right? Now, once again, we are, you know, we are not looking on the betas themselves, but we are looking on, you know, on betas average them all, uh, you know, a lot of times, okay? So when you average beta a lot of times, what do you get, right? You are going to get beta head, right? And this beta head, now, uh, you know, uh, the distribution of beta or the distribution of average beta, Let's say we're looking on average beta, right? It will be basically some, it will be a, you know, some, some, some sort of a normal distribution by some sort of a version, by some sort of a, you know, of a central limit theorem. Of course, if mathematicians, you know, look, watching this video, they will chop my head alive because, of course, I'm wrong and, you know, you have to put a lot of assumptions that it works. But in the financial world and in the industry, right, and I think a lot of times in statistics, you kind of, you know, sweeps those, uh, uh, you know, sweeps those assumptions under the rug 
and you assume you're making a very easy simplifying assumptions that this guy is going to have you know uh, um, normal you know normal uh, normal distribution now because you have more than one beta right you are going to have what do you are going to have you are going to have a multi-normal distribution right beta head beta head which is a vector is going to be distributed in a multi-normal distribution So for now, multi-normal distribution, you want to have the covariance of betas. Right? You want to know what is the covariance of betas. So, and you also want to know the average. So the average is easy. The average is this. The average is basically going to be is my x transpose x inverse x transpose y. Right? So, you know, when you are running it, when you are running this regression coefficients, right, the first time you are going to get you know, uh, the betas using these formulas, you assume that the average is distributed like this, comma, right? And now you want the covariance matrix. And the covariance matrix is going to be x transpose x inverse times sigma square. And sigma square is going to be the variance of epsilon. Okay? So, you take the residual, right? You take its variance, and you multiply it by the matrix which controls them on, right? This is your Sarun, this is your uh, Lord of the Rings matrix, right? And you get a certain matrix which will be a copy, which will be a multiple of your, you know, of your original matrix of X's, okay? So you can say that your distribution is actually very close to the original distribution of your X transpose X, right? Because it's just multiplication by sigma square, and, right? So once you have this, okay, that's your average betas. Now, this is a very important thing. These betas, right, are multinormal distributed. So for example, for example, if you have two, if you have, let's say, two bet, if you have two betas, okay, beta one and beta two. And by the way, this also includes the intercept, right? Because beta zero is your intercept, and x transpose, remember, the ones, right, are part of this matrix. So this formula is actually nice, and includes the intercept, and the neat thing about this is this formula is going to collapse to the formula, you know, to the usual formula we had, this covariance of xy divided by the variance of x for beta, right, in the one-dimensional case. Right? So if you take this matrix, right, and you do the whole shebang, you, it's a two by two matrix, right? Because you have the intercept and you have the first coefficient. And you do the whole shebang, you invert it, right? And you look on that, you're going to get that beta equals to this, okay? Now, maybe I'll do it, maybe not, but it depends on, on you guys, right? So, when you have something like that, okay? If you have two coefficients, right? What will be your, what will be kind of your, what, how can you think about it, right? Remember, we talked about confidence intervals, right? Confidence intervals is areas, okay, of the, you know, is certain areas which include 95% of the distribution. In this particular case, right, you have a two-dimensional normal distribution for beta 1 and beta 2. I'm not including the intercept. I'm just looking at beta 1 and beta 2. So it's going to be something like that. It's going to be an ellipse, right? In a three-dimensional case, it's going to be an ellipsoid. In a four-dimensional case, it's going to be a four-dimensional ellipsoid. Now, to create those ellipsoids, right, you can, but it takes, it takes, you know, it's a little cumbersome. So, how do people address it? How do people solve it? Well, people say the following. We will, we will create, right, confidence intervals for betas. We will create. But we are going to treat betas as standalone, okay? So we are not going to create those shapes. We are, for in this example, we take beta 1, beta 2, right? And for beta 1, we create a confidence interval. And for beta 2, we are going to create a confidence interval. And remember, confidence interval for one-dimensional case are just lines, right? So these are going to be, for example, those kind of babies, right? 
where this is a we say this is your center of the distribution and this is your uh, sigma right where you want for example 95 percent of the interval this is going to be 95 percent right so it means that whatever betas you have right in this range and then if you want you will run this regression 100 times right 95 percent of the times you'll probably you know have betas in this kind of interval okay so it's going to be actually you know so the so the the smaller the volatility right the tighter the beta sorry the smaller the volatility of the beta versus the you know versus versus the average right the tighter this interval is going to be okay now how do we how do we think about those beta ones beta two how can we take the volatility where that volatility comes from right if it's a one-dimensional case well look at this matrix again right the diagonal is a covariance of beta okay the covariance of beta i i right is your diagonal but what is the covariance of beta the covariance of beta is a variance of beta, right? Variance of beta, right? So if you want to have, you know, to know the volatility for beta 1, right? You are going to get your covariance beta 1, 1, and you just take a square root, right? And you will find your volatility of beta 1, 1. If you want the volatility of beta 2, 2, you do exactly the same. You take the covariance, right, of beta 2, 2, right? And you take the square root and you'll find the volatility of beta 2, etc., 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 etc. Okay? So if you have million dollar, million things, you will have a million matrices, yada, 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 yada. Now, just remember, right, that these guys are actually, you know, are actually switched, you know, moved by one because beta, beta 1 and beta 2 are actually, you know, are actually like the second thing in this x transpose x because the first one is the intercept. So maybe here, right, you want to, you know, it depends on your enumeration, but if you have beta 1, right, it's maybe not beta 1, 1, but maybe the beta 2, 2, right? So I, I you know, I hope that you, you understand what I mean, okay? Because the first one, the first thing is your volatility, right? So if we have, let's say, so if we have in this presentation beta 0 plus beta 1, right, so covariance beta 1, 1 is going to, if you start your enumeration in x transpose x with 1, this guy will correspond to this guy. This guy will correspond to this guy. However, if you start it from 0, right, so your x, x transpose x, your first row is zeros, right, this guy will correspond to this guy, and this guy will correspond to this guy. So it depends on your enumeration, but I think you, you get the point. Okay? So... You know, so basically, once you have these sigmas, right, then you can con construct your, you know, your, your, your confidence intervals, and then you'll be ready for a hypothesis testing, okay? So next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about hypothesis testing. Thank you very much, and have a great day.